guys. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the hidden truth of the New York Jets draft that nobody is talking about right now. Okay, nobody. And it all kind of spawned yesterday when a report came out saying that the Jets have had their eye on speedster from uh, speedster wide receiver from Alabama, Henry Ruggs III. Uh, as of right now, it's combine week and there's a lot of talk, there's a lot of buzz about Ruggs stock going up because he could possibly break John Ross's 40 time and everybody freaks out about the 40 times, right? It's, it's the media's favorite drill. It's like the fan's favorite drill. Uh, but anyway, solid college career. Played with Tua, played with Jerry Judy, the whole squad, won a bunch of games, Nick Saban, etc. Um, and there's a lot of talk, you know, right now amongst the Jets fans on Twitter and on Instagram. Uh, kind of a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of noise being being made by these fans saying, "Oh my God, is this going to be the pick at spot number 11? Uh, should we take him at 11? Is that the right move? Uh, could we possibly get something else? We have to address O line. What about edge rusher? We we got to get an edge rusher in the building. We haven't had a good edge rusher or a good pass rusher in years we don't we don't have any corners should we trade back to get this guy get more picks i saw one mock draft saying that rug should be going or um the guy had uh henry rugs going to the new york giants at spot number four which is way too high but anyway there's a lot of talk right now and there's a lot of people wanting answers because the new york jets right now they did not have a good season last year okay and you're looking at this team going into next year and you're like oh my god adam gase is still the head coach we have so many holes on this team we got demolished by really good teams last season and we got humiliated against the worst teams in the league like the miami dolphins like the cincinnati Bengals. um you know it's kind of shaky right now look projecting or looking into the future but I want to talk about this hidden truth, okay? The New York, and it's cra this is going to sound crazy, but as it pertains to the draft, the New York Jets are in a, an ex they're in an extremely favorable position, okay? Yes, we're out of the top five. Yes, we're out of the top ten. But when you look at this team, when you look at the players that are going to be available, when you look at the players inside this draft, specifically at positions, how highly regarded are these guys right at certain positions the new york jets can really select a multitude of different players here and get a massive massive upgrade and it kind of that that's kind of what i feel like is being lost in this whole mix it's yes obviously we want to maximize and get the best player possible the most impactful player possible uh for not only this upcoming year for years to come in the future Right, first round picks are supposed to be on your team for you know five to ten seasons. Right, that's the goal. You don't want to select a player and then be a bust, or then just sign a, a new deal somewhere else as soon as the rookie deal comes up. That's a failed pick. That's a failed pick by the front office. So we got to make sure. And by the way, I don't care if you're picking one or thirty-two. You got you have to have knowledge inside the front office that if you are selecting a player in the first round, you envision this guy. You envision this player. I don't care if it's offense, defense, whatever, quarterback or edge rusher, whoever it is, you envision this player being on your team for years, for years. So we got to nail spot number 11, right? We, we got to pick a solid, solid player. So of course, you know, there's a lot of talk. Who should we take? We have to maximize the, the, the pick here, but here's the beauty of it, right? Here's the silver lining. Whether we go Jerry Judy, whether we go Tristan Wirfs, CD Lamb, Andrew Thomas, Jedrick Wills, Makai Becton, right? AJ Epinesa, right? Nobody's even talking about him or, you know, an edge rusher. It doesn't even matter who we pick. The bottom line is the New York Jets are going to be getting a massive, massive, massive upgrade because we are, we have so many holes on this roster. We have no edge rusher. We have no offensive line. We have no number one wide receiver. And Robbie Anderson is probably headed out the door. Okay, let's just kind of, I have to come to that reality. I love Robbie Anderson. I'm extremely pumped that Todd Bowles and Mike McCagnum gave him that opportunity. But he's going to go get paid somewhere else. Um, just doesn't really fit Dar Darnold's game. Doesn't really fit Adam Gase's system. You know, he's the coach and he's making the decisions here. So... You're looking at this Jets team, you're looking at this Jets roster moving forward, and yes, of course, like I said, like we all want here, we need to maximize the position, we need to get the best player possible, but 
whether we take CeeDee Lamb or Jerry Judy or whoever it is, they're going to be coming in and pretty much being the best player at the position, right? Say, for example, hypothetically speaking, we take CeeDee Lamb. He's the best wide receiver on the team. He's the best wide receiver on the team. He's an instant upgrade over everybody. You could play on the outside, play on the inside, great hands, speedster. You could throw it to him short. He tends to catch a lot of bubble screens. Adam Gase loves to call bubble screens, right? He's perfect fit for the offense. Oh, let's talk about Jerry Judy. Best route runner on the team, best hands on the team, uh, wins at 50-50 balls, okay, best wide receiver on the team. Oh, let's talk about a, you know, Makai Becton, biggest, most athletic, most dynamic offensive lineman we have on the team. Same with Andrew Thomas. Well, I don't really know so much about the weight and the height for Thomas, but you guys get the point. You can play on the left side, you can play on the right side. Instantly becomes our best offensive lineman. And we can go in a multitude of different, uh, different ways, right? Uh, even, like I said before, a guy like A.J. Epinesa. If a guy like Jeff Okuda falls in the draft to spot number 11, I don't see that happening. But look, Marshawn Lattimore was expected to go top three the year he came out, and he fell in the draft, right? It was the year that uh, the Bears traded up for Trubisky, Chiefs traded up for Mahomes, that whole season, Bills traded down, etc. Deshaun Watson goes to the Texans. Marshawn Lattimore fell in that draft. And we took Jamal Adams at spot number six, and I was pumped up, right? That it was kind of a similar style of year, right? Whether we talk, whether we took a Jamal Adams at strong safety, whether we took a Marshawn Lattimore at corner, whether we took a uh, Malik Hooker at free safety, it was going to be a massive upgrade because the Bears traded up uh, that one position and picked a quarterback. Nobody was really expecting that. Uh, Miles Garrett goes, Solomon Thomas goes. And everybody's kind of looking around, scrambling. The Tennessee Titans take Corey Davis. Nobody's really expecting that. And all of a sudden, you're the Jets on the clock, spot number six, Mike McCadden. Uh, and you're sitting there looking looking at all the players available. And, and you could pretty much say, we can't go wrong. We cannot go wrong here. And we're in a vi- – and again, we're at spot number 11. We're not at spot number six. And we have to have a lot of things bounce our way. But the beauty of it is there's four offensive linemen – that will be the best offensive lineman on the team instantly the minute they get drafted there are two wide receivers arguably three with rugs but i still think rugs needs a little bit of work i I kind of view him as the same style of receiver um as a robbie anderson as a tyree kill type of guy where speed is his number one attribute um i don't really know as far as route running how good is he compared to a lamb or a judy uh but in any case for o-line Two wide receivers, a couple edge rushers, right? I know there's some talk about um, Chasson and uh, Epinesa. I personally like Epinesa better just because I prefer – I would. I think Epinesa is going to trans, translate to the league a little bit better. Um, he's been more consistent uh, in the Big Ten, which kind of solid offensive line play. But nonetheless, the hidden truth, the bottom line, doesn't matter who the Jets pick. We're going to be getting a massive, massive, massive upgrade. Massive upgrade. Even a guy like C.J. Henderson out of Florida, Trevon Diggs out of Alabama, two cornerbacks. If we go and select them, Main Street or uh, you know, all these TV networks, all these internet sites and stuff, they're all going to say the Jets reached. The Jets reached. What a horrible draft. It's an F. The Jets reached on C.J. Henderson. He's being mocked at spot number twenty. Why? Why did they take him? Trevon Diggs. Oh, he's the third best corner, the fourth best corner in the draft. Why would the Jets take him? In my personal opinion, he's the second best. But regardless, both of those guys were to come in. They're going to be the day one best cornerback on the team. And that's the beauty of it. That's what's amazing about this Jets team right now. Yes, we did not do well against good teams. And we got killed by bad teams. And it sucked. And we still play in the uh, same division as Belichick. And the Bills are on the uprise. And the Miami Dolphins look like they're on the uprise. But we're in a very, very, very favorable uh, position right now as we kind of transition from season to NFL draft. So I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section uh, regarding the Jets draft. And, uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets.